This morning, I want to bring a message to you from God's word. And, and again, I know, like, I know Jesus is out of the tomb. I know it's good news. I know, but, but unfortunately, unfortunately, I've got just a little bit of a bad news. See, we intercepted your lab reports. And um, unfortunately, I got to tell you that your lab reports came in and you have a blood disease. You say, Pastor, how did you get my lab reports? We know people in the county, right? Just don't worry about it. But trust me, you've got a blood disease. You say, Pastor, is it a rare blood disease? No, it's not a rare disease. It's actually quite common. It's the most common disease known to man. It's sin. Romans 6.23 says it like this, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So put on your best Easter smile, look at your neighbor, and tell them you're a sinner. Sir, you said that with a lot of force. Have you been waiting to say, like, have you been waiting to say that? I mean, just, actually, just in case you're doubting me, let's just do, let's do a little sin survey in the house. Everybody stand. Everybody stand to your feet. We're going to do, so here's what, here's what we're going to do. I know this is getting real awkward really quick on an Easter Sunday morning, and I'm in control of it, and I love it. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> little sin survey on Easter Sunday. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you the Ten Commandments. <laughs> and at the point where you've broken the commandment, you sit. We're going to play last man standing, okay? We're going to play. <laughs> Pastor Steve's got some extra peeps for you. All right, so first, first commandment is this. You shall have no other gods before me. Okay, so if you have never in your life put yourself or money or sports or a relationship or your time, or if you've never, if you've never ever one time put anything above God, you remain. All right, y'all, this is worse than I thought. <laughs> y'all bunch of sinners, you didn't even make it to number two. <laughs> but just for fun, let me keep reading. <laughs> you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth below. Number three, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Number four, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy if you have ever mowed your lawn on a Sunday. Number five, honor your father and mother. Number six, you shall not murder. And just in case you're feeling real good about that one, Jesus says if you've ever been angry with someone, you're guilty of that. You shall not commit adultery. Same thing, Jesus says if you've ever looked at someone lustfully, you're guilty of that one. Uh, number eight, don't steal. Number nine, don't lie. Number 10, you shall not covet. Okay, so, so just, just to be safe here nobody's standing <laughs> so we got so we got a pro <laughs> yes yeah, somebody pointed at me I need to be I need to be laying <laughs> I need to be laying down <laughs> this is just by virtue of the the position right now so we got to deal with this right if you are so, so I don't know, maybe you're one for 10, so let's try to come up with some so solutions together. How can we overcome this blood disease? Maybe somebody would say, hey, pastor, let's play baseball, right? Let's play baseball. Here's what I mean by that. Nobody bats a, th nobody bats a thousand, and so uh, if you bat 300, unless you're Pete Rose, you make it into the Hall of Fame, right? So, so the problem... The, here, here's the problem with that. Like even if you've kept one or if you've kept two, James 2.10 says it like this. For the person who keeps all of the laws except one is as guilty as the person who has broken all of God's laws. All right, so that doesn't work. Let's try to come up with another solution. Oh, I know. Your fourth grade self will love this one. You'll love it. Grading on a... <laughs> let's grade on a curve. So, so I won't have you stand for this one, but let's just rate yourself, okay? If one, let's just say one is Hitler, 
and no, nobody's a 10, right? Because the Bible said for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But let's put uh, Billy Graham and Mother Teresa, let's put them at a nine, all right? And why don't you just rate yourself on a scale of one to 10? So 10 is perfect, one not so good. Where do you, where do you fall on that scale? So the problem with that, though, is that the Bible says this in Romans 3.10, there is no one righteous, not even one. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says that salvation is not from yourselves, it's not of works, so that nobody can boast. So according to the Bible, not even by their works, Billy Graham and Mother Teresa, they don't get into heaven. Anybody want to wave at me and say I'm, be I'm better than Mother Teresa? Any anybody better than Billy Graham? See, this is, this is getting worse and worse on Easter Sunday. Okay, if we can't grade on a curve, then pastor, I'll just, I'll just keep it confined, all right? We've all got this sin problem, so I'll just enter into to sin management. I'll just, uh, well, the, the problem with that is, what did I say at the beginning? It's a blood disease, and what do we know about blood is that blood takes what is in one part of your body, and it moves it to every part of your body. And so, unfortunately, this, this disease, you can't confine it, right? Like, it's not a gallbladder. Uh, I've got somebody, somebody that I know in my life, they're, they're having their gallbladder removed on Tuesday. You can have your gallbladder removed in a game of laser tag now, right? Like you just walk through the hospital, like zap, they shoot it. I know it's not that simple, but it's like you can, you can confine that gallbladder and you can get that out. But this is a, this is a blood disease. It's more like, are you, are you like me? Do you put some fruit out on your your countertop, like I think right now we've got some grapes out there. We've got a, uh, I keep avocados out there. You know, those last about, about two seconds before they start turning brown. Sometimes apples out there. The problem is if I were to peel an apple and there was one part of that apple that was rotten, and if I just leave that apple in and of itself, the good part of that apple does not overtake the rotten part, right? What happens? The rotten starts to spread. See, the Bible, friends, the Bible's serious about sin, not because God doesn't want you to have any fun. The Bible is serious about sin because sin is a cancer that gets into your bloodstream and it begins to spread and affect every part of your life. Sir, it'll affect your work. It'll affect your ability to make money. It'll affect your ability to be a dad. It'll affect your ability to be a mom. It'll affect your relationships, it'll affect your joy, it'll affect your peace, and it begins to spread, and it begins to spread. Oh, and by the way, in case I didn't mention this part, your blood disease is fatal. 100% of the time, you're, <laughs> you're going to die. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. Hebrews 9.27, it's appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So we have to eradicate this blood disease. We can't confine it. We can't grade on a curve. We can't do any of those. We got, we, got to get to the, we got to get to the root. And so maybe somebody would ask, well, okay, pastor, if that's the deal, then how did sin enter into the world? And that's actually a really good question. Because if you get to the root of something, you know how to eradicate it. So let's go all the way back, how sin got into the world. Let me say it like this. You're not a sinner because you sin. You're, you're a, you sin because you're a sinner. Does that make sense? So you're a sinner not because you told a lie last week and you cheated a little bit and some words came out of your mouth yesterday that shouldn't come out. Like that's not what makes you a sinner. What makes you a sinner is this blood disease is actually hereditary. So you do the acts of sin because you were born into sin. And for that, we have to go all the way back to Adam and Eve. So God created mankind. He created Adam. He created Eve. And his reason for doing that was relationship. I mean, he liked hanging out with the angels and all of that. But he wanted to create somebody. He wanted to create mankind that would love him back, not because they had to, but because they had 
free choice. They had a free will. And so everything was going great until the serpent comes into the garden and the serpent offers Eve a piece of fruit. She takes the fruit and the serpent said, did God really say this? Come on, you'll be like God if you take a bite. Eve ate the fruit. She gave some to Adam, by the way, for all the men that want to blame the women in the room. Adam, the Bible says Adam was right there the whole time. And so they were doing this together. And so like it's sin entered into the world. It's called original, original, the theological term, it's called original sin. So that should help make you feel a little bit better. It's like every, everybody is born with this. Let me do this. Let me, can I prove the doctrine of original sin? Let me prove the doctrine of original sin. Here's how I know, here's how we know that we can believe in original sin. <laughs> I've seen, I've seen your children. I mean, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I mean, they look so, I know, the, I love your kids. They're so good. They're so cute. Your Easter picture on Facebook today is going to be so amazing. I just know the 82 pictures you had to take beforehand to get that one because brother was pulling on sister's hair and you had fists flying. Like, I, I, we know this, right? You did not, you did not have to teach your children. You're like, Oh my, oh my goodness, my, my kid overshares. He wants to share his snacks. He wants to share his toys. He wants to share everything. I just need to teach him not to share so much. Like you didn't have to do that, right? You didn't have to teach your kid to, to hit. You didn't have to teach your kid to yell or, or to scream. We understand that. We're just going to, Pastor Bill in the new, in the new kids, he was asking me, so we're moving uh, our, uh, church facilities over across the street and our kids facilities are over there and he was asking me hey we need to come up with with a slogan that goes above the children's ministry maybe we should just say here lie in here lies uh, the doctrine of original sin like come come observe what's no I, again i know i mean not your kid i'm talking about other people's kids but like just this there's something in us like Somebody cuts you off in traffic. Your, your first instinct is not to say, God bless you. <laughs> your first thing said, well, we won't mention that because you got a multiply church sticker on the back. I mean, but like all of these, all of these things. All of us have this blood disease of sin. And so in order to deal with the blood disease, we have to go all the way back to Adam and we have to, this is a Thanos moment. You have to undo what's been done. And so unless you know Tony Stark or Ant-Man or Doc from Back to the Future, we got a little bit of a problem. How do you, how do you undo everything that Adam did? Well, let's walk through that for, for a moment. The blood disease was committed, the sin, the original sin was committed by somebody in the flesh. So that means that God couldn't just send an angel or God just couldn't speak. Like if God can do anything, did anybody ever think of it this way? If God can do anything, why couldn't he just speak? Hey, sin is done. You're, for, you're forgiven. It's because it doesn't work that way. God had, had in, as sin had entered into the world through flesh. And so it had to be undone by flesh. And so whoever is going to undo this blood disease of sin would have to walk in the flesh. But the problem with walking into the flesh is because uh, pastor you told us it's hereditary and so if somebody is born on this planet through the seed of man then they are going to carry the sin with him and uh, with them and so not only do they have to walk in the flesh and be born of the flesh they also have to be born of a virgin virgin this has to be an immaculate conception and then not only do they have to be born free of sin but they have to live a sinless life they can't get angry they can't blaspheme they have to they they have to keep all of the Ten Commandments for all of the time that they walk on this earth. And because the wages of sin is death, whoever this is that is walking a perfect life, they can't just live. They actually have to die because in Leviticus and Hebrews, it says there is no for, uh, forgiveness of sins except through the shedding of blood. But the problem there is not only do they have to die, because if they die, a lot of people
people died. Like we can go to the grave this morning and we can walk through lots of people that have died. Then they have to be raised from the dead and they can't stop there. They can't stop with just being raised from the dead. They have to appropriate that blood that has overcome the original sin. They have to appropriate that blood into our lives so that we can receive a blood transfusion. In his book, Written in Blood, Robert Coleman tells the story of a little boy whose sister needed a blood transfusion. The doctor explained that she had the same disease that the boy had recovered from two years earlier, and her only chance for recovery was a transfusion from someone who had previously conquered the disease. Since the two children had the same rare blood type, the boy was the ideal donor. So they went to the brother and they looked at him and they said, Johnny, you've had this disease, you've overcome it, your blood now has the antibodies. Would you donate some of your blood to your sister? The little boy, his eyes got big and his lip started to quiver a little bit, but he, but he bit his lip and he said, said in his heart for my sister, I'll, I'll do this. And so he nodded his head and so they took him back there. He was so brave and they put him on the gurney and they, they hooked him up and they, they got his, the, the needle in his vein. And as the blood began to run, as that blood with the antibodies, the blood that had overcome the disease began to run out of his, began to run out of his veins. A tear comes down his cheek and he looks over at the nurse and, and he said, how, how long? And she said, what do you mean, sweetheart? Like how long uh, will this Will this transfusion take? And he said, no. He said, how, how long until I die? See, Johnny didn't understand in that moment that he had more blood. He thought that he was giving all of his blood. Fortunately, in that case, in that case, the brother didn't have to die. But friends, make no mistake about it. For our sin, for your sin, for my sin, some, somebody had to die. We're all sick this morning. I know we've got all kinds of different reasons for it. I know it makes itself manifest in all kinds of different ways. But friends, the only way, the only cure for this thing this morning is you need a, you need a blood transfusion. The Bible says that it's not by coming to an Easter service. It's not by doing good works. It's not by knowing my Bible verses or, or singing songs. Like all of that, all of that is wonderful. But the Bible says that the only only way that we can get rid of this hereditary blood disease is that we receive a blood transfusion. And just in case you're here this morning and you're thinking, yeah, pastor, that blood might be good for somebody else, but pastor, you don't, you don't know what I've done. You don't know my past. You don't know my history. You don't know what I've said. You don't know what I've thought even this morning. Like, I know we're smiling right now, but, but we had it out. The family had it out on the way to Easter service. I don't know. I don't know if you can see see what blood type this is, but this is blood type O negative. In other words, it's the blood of a universal donor. Can I preach to somebody this morning that Jesus' blood is the blood of a universal donor? It's good for you. It's good for you. It's good for your sin, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've said, no matter what you've thought. Jesus' blood, and it also says on this, it says volunteer donor volunteer donor Jesus says this nobody took my life from me I gave it up willingly church I don't know if you're here this morning I don't know what you're walking through but I'm talking to believers right now I'm talking to the believers that Jesus blood is running through your veins but you would just say something like this pastor the attack of hell is coming against me it's coming against my family and I want to walk in the victory of the blood of Jesus I want the blood of Jesus over my life I want the blood of Jesus over my kids I want the blood of Jesus over my home I want the blood of Jesus over my health can I tell you that the blood Aren't you thankful that the blood of Jesus is good for whatever you're, for whatever you're walking through this morning? It's good over cancer. It's good over sickness. It's good over disease. 
And so if you're a believer in the house this morning and you say, Pastor, I want that blood of Jesus just to be appropriated in my life, in my home, would you stand to your feet right now and just say, that's me, Jesus. I want to walk under the blood. I want to live under the blood. I want to sing under the blood. I want to. Sh- I, I want everything in my life, everything that I do, everything that I say, I want to be under the blood of Jesus. Can we all stand in this auditorium? And would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me today? We'll walk out of these doors in just a moment. But sir, ma'am, teenager, you're here for a reason this morning. I know the enemy's lying to you. I know the enemy's saying like, hey, just do this later or, or put it off or the pastor's not talking to you, you're too bad to receive the blood of Jesus. But if there's somebody in the room, there's multiple people in the room this morning, and I believe that there are, that either you've never had this blood transfusion, you've never accepted the blood of Jesus Christ into your life, you've never made him your personal Lord and Savior, Or maybe you have, but it's years ago and you're kind of off doing your own thing and you need to come back to Jesus. If you're here this morning and you would say, Pastor, I need a blood transfusion. I want to give my heart. I want to give my life to Jesus. I'm going to count to three. And when I get to three, I don't want you to hesitate. I don't want you to hold back. Jesus didn't hold back going to the cross for you. And so don't hold back on Jesus. His blood is here. His love is here his grace is here his forgiveness is here his second chances are here pastor you don't know how many times I've failed it's okay the blood of Jesus is good for whatever you're walking through and so if that's you this morning pastor I want to give my life to Jesus when I get to three I don't want you to hesitate I want you to lift your hand high you can put it right back down and we will pray together right at your seat one pastor I know I'm a sinner two pastor I want the blood of Jesus running through my veins three come on just lift your hand high I got you who else who else I got you in the back I got you I got you I got you who else come on just lift your hand high this morning say pastor that's me I want the blood of Jesus I got you I got you I got you who else who else who else you can put your hands down I'll wait a few more minutes who else I counted probably seven or eight hands We're going to pray in just a moment. These aren't magic words. It's just the prayer of your heart. You're going to to be changed. Can I invite you after this service? This this baptismal tank's still good. We, We got shorts for you. We got towels for you. We got a shirt. Can I encourage you? Maybe this morning, not just say yes to Jesus. We'll wait for you to get baptized. So let's all pray this prayer together out loud, church. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Is there one more? Is there one more with heads bowed, eyes closed? You'd say, Pastor, include me in this prayer. I don't want to walk out of here without a blood transfusion. Is there one more? Is there one more? I'm just scanning. Is there one more? I got you, bud. I got you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Church, let's pray this prayer together. Everybody out loud. Say, Jesus, I come to the cross. I ask forgiveness for my sins. I ask you to come into my life, come into my heart, and help me to live wide awake to the love of God and fully alive to my purpose in Jesus' name. And now, God, I bless these that have said yes to you. Enemy, get away from their life. Get away from their thoughts. Get away from them in the name of Jesus. I bless you to fall more in love with Jesus each and every day. I bless you to read his word. I bless you to be discipled. I bless you to walk out of here free. I bless you to walk out of here a new creation. I bless you to walk out of here with the resurrection power of Jesus Christ running through your veins. Come on, church, let's celebrate with those who gave their life to Jesus this morning. Well, I hope the service today made a difference in your life. It was such an awesome service. Yeah, so exciting. If you made a decision to follow Jesus today, we would love to know. All you have to do is download the app and click I'm new. 
We have all kinds of resources we'd love to give you as you begin your journey in following Him. All right, Lee, it's Easter. It Easter's is, done. Yes. We did it. We probably, we dressed in black though. Aren't we supposed to wear like, um, you know, like lavender or like light colors? I mean, those are the colors Pastels. for Easter's. Yeah, we kind of look like we were mourning. I mean, we were. were. If you're mourning the death of Jesus we before, were. then you go to the tomb. And, and that is why that we is, have black on. That's right, we wore black because we, we were knew. were mourning. But then we're not. And then we were happy we just didn't change because he was risen. Or just because I like black. <laughs>